this is uh, Ruben Rincon from the Sprout team. I uh, will give a couple minutes before getting started with the webinar uh, to give another uh, other people to join. So we'll start in two minutes. So uh, let's get started with the webinar. Uh, first of all, uh, let me uh, welcome you on behalf of the Sprout team. And uh, today we'll be uh, showing you how to take advantage of your JavaScript skills to create applications using Sprout. Uh, a couple of housekeeping before uh, elements before we get started. Uh, we have a chat window that you can uh, access on your right side. If you have any questions, we will also have our engineers from the uh, platform team and uh, the people who's been working on all this framework, they will be able to answer questions at the end. Um, and also, we will be recording the session, so later you will be able to have access to it. And uh, finally, just comment that uh, for showing the applications, we will actually be uh, showing live on the on the Sprout because it's a best way for you guys to uh, understand or, or have a good experience on, on how these APIs work. So, um, yeah, so let's get started. And uh, this is what we're going to cover during the following hour. First of all, I'll give you a quick intro to Sprout and the Sprout development. And then my colleague, Wei Seto, will be uh, showing you how to take advantage of your JavaScript skills uh, to create applications for Sprout. He will be doing a live demo session. And also, we'll be showing you the uh, the Sprout emulator. We'll show you later when where to find some test machines. And finally, we'll be answering your questions on a QA session with the platform team. So let's get started. So first of all, Sprout is the new immersive computing platform by HP. What we have done is reinvent personal computing into what we call immersive computing. For that, we created this product that you see here. First of all, it's a high performance all-in-one machine. So make no mistake, it's a full uh, Windows 8.1 machine with a 23 inches full HD touch screen. And it has all the elements that a machine, a high performance machine will have and uh, a processor Intel i7, 8 gigs of RAM, and an uh, NVIDIA GPU. Now, what makes it very special is the other components that comes with the machine. So the second component that comes with it is this a detachable touch mat. It's a, it, it projects a second screen on top of it, and it's a very flexible, detachable, removable, and very resistant. You can actually spill any liquid, and uh, we have marketed with Sharpies, crayons, and at the end you just uh, put a little bit of Windex on it and clean it off, and it will all will come out. It's a 20 touch point. It's a multi touch. It's a capacitive mat, so you can do, so the detection is done actually on the mat. And the other interesting part of the Sprout is the Illuminator. So the Illuminator is this part that uh, is on the top. It contains contains an array of cameras. It has a 14.6 megapixel camera as well as a real sense sensor. It also has a built-in LED, LED desk lamp, and it has a mirror that actually projects the second screen onto, onto the mat. The projector actually is on the back of the unit. Now, the idea behind the illuminator is allowing creative minds to bring elements from the real world very quickly, capture elements from the real world only in a matter of seconds. So that is uh, what Sprout is from a hardware, a hardware perspective. Now we have also uh, integrated this concept of blended reality. And what we want to say with it is allowing the creative minds to bring things from the real world into the digital world in a very simplistic approach, in a very seamless way. For instance, uh, what the, this is actually a picture that we took from the Maker Faire here in the Bay Area a couple of weeks back. 
and what this artist is doing is a graffiti artist is is painting on top of this uh, mask and every time that he paints something he is uh, taking a snapshot in this stop motion application and at the end he's able to create a video with it. Uh, another another uh, use case has been uh, that we also show there was an origami application where the where the users will be able to give me just a second I'll mute someone who just jump. All right, sorry about that. Uh, so the, uh, another application was, for instance, we have an origami application in our marketplace where we actually distribute these product applications where uh, people can take advantage of the projection to uh, that will instruct them how to fold the paper and create origami pieces. So this is sort of augmented reality use case. Uh, another important element that we have been working on is 3D. So what we intend is to make 3D accessible to everybody. Right now 3D is very complex. You need to know a lot about the technology itself. We want to bring the whole creation process in 3D from scanning to the printing in a very simplistic approach. We're still working on parts of it uh, and there is elements that we have already uh, available in, our, in, in this product machine like the 3D snapshot, we're able to actually scan an element like the uh, what you see on the screenshot. We scan a uh, seashell and now uh, we brought it into uh, the Dremel software and we are printing it with a Dremel 3D printer because you can actually use any uh, application that we run on Windows. That's the big advantage. Now these are a couple of ideas of the things that are possible uh, or what we think that can be done with Sprout, but what is more important is what uh, you, the developers, will be able to bring to the table. Uh, so some examples of them are, for instance, annotation, capture, collaboration, dual screen, taking advantage of the two screens of the, of, of the machine, bringing a lot of objects and elements to the digital world, and uh, augmented reality using the projector, the projected light on top of real objects. It also gives a very interesting use case. Now let me let me tell you a little bit about the SDK and the platform. In order to develop for Sprout, you you have a couple options. You have uh, there are very standard uh, development options. First of all. Uh, you can develop as you will do it with any desktop application. You can use WPF and uh, with a Microsoft.net. And you can also use C++. Now we are today introducing the development using web technologies like HTML5, CSS3, and JavaScript, which is pretty exciting. Now in terms of the development environment, you can either use uh, Visual Studio uh, and you can also use Qt Creator if you decide so to develop in C++ using Qt, but at the end you can use any C++ editor that you, you want to use. The good thing about these tools that we're showing here is that there is a free community edition that you can take advantage and then you can just download from the web, their website. Now for JavaScript and web development, you can use any tool that you currently use that goes from uh, Notepad to whatever tool you have been uh, using. And now, uh, in terms of the APIs that you can take advantage of for Sprout, I mentioned already that you normally will do standard Windows development. So now, uh, apart from this, from the standard development that you will do for a Windows application, you can use some of the functions that we make available to take advantage of the specific hardware elements of Sprout. For instance, the cameras. You can capture multiple objects only in a matter of seconds. Uh, we also have functions for performing text extraction or OCR. And we also have some API for object tracking and recognition. So you can put one item on top of the touch mat then the API will train which is the object that is being recognized and from that moment on you can put uh, any other element and it will only recognize the element that uh, that it was trained with. 
um, and it will also give you the angle that the orientation of that element. So it's a pretty cool API. We also have a couple of APIs that, to take advantage of the two screens. First of all, uh, we have um, we have the API that allows a uh, two-window application to push one of the windows into the touch mat. It will make sure that the that window on top of the touch mat is full screen and is topmost. You also have some control of the soft keyboard. And if you decide so, you can also control some of the mat events. They will normally go to the Windows layer, but you can actually get them before they go to the Windows layer. All right, so uh, now I'm going to give the word to my colleague, Wei Seto, who will be talking to you about using JavaScript to make Sprout apps. So uh, let me just go to Seto. OK, Seto, all yours. Thank you, Ruben. Um, I hope everyone can hear me well. Um, good. Uh, afternoon to everybody. My name is Wai Sato. I'm also a technical manager in the Sprout team, uh, just like Ruben. I've uh, been with the Sprout team for a couple of years now. Uh, been working with a few um, uh, strategic partners and, and, and community of developers to develop applications on Sprout. So today uh, I actually uh, very excited to introduce uh, two uh, of our um, uh, development tools to you guys. We just uh, made it available uh, Monday, and so uh, I will be introducing the uh, JavaScript framework that we have, and also also the emulator that we just made available. Um, so I, I have a little bit of a dry throat today, so I apologize in advance. I try not to cough into the microphone directly, uh, but you won't get infected at least. So. Um, Here's the quick agenda for the uh, JavaScript section. So we're going to uh, dive in a little bit and talk about what the framework contains and how, how it comes about and why we choose that uh, this particular framework. Um, and then we go through the uh, popular features that we uh, get from the uh, Sprout SDK itself and integrate into the framework. Um, then the exciting part is actually do the live uh, coding and live typing of the uh, of, a, of a JavaScript application to show you how easy it is to um, uh, to create an application in just a few minutes, um, and then we'll, sh we'll obviously show you the uh, uh, you know information on where to get this uh, framework to develop source for Sprout. So uh, this JavaScript framework, when uh, our, our Sprout team started to work on JavaScript, we um, have identified a framework called nw.js, and previously the name is actually called uh, Note WebKit Framework. Uh, from the name itself, Note WebKit, you probably uh, can imagine it takes advantage of uh, two popular uh, web technology communities. Uh, one is the Node.js community, and the other one is the WebKit, or in this case, actually the Chromium community. Uh, the great work of these two communities. Uh, of providing a you know, great HTML5 JavaScript feature. So the framework itself had these two uh, um, uh, features built in with Node.js support and also Chromium support. Um, the Sprout team uh, using this framework and integrated our SDK API into this framework. So with a very simple set of uh, API call, uh, developer can access to the um, Sprout SDK and the Sprout unique hardware features that way. So, so what are the features that we have made available through this framework? Um, through the Sprout SDK and through this framework, <coughs> excuse me, the developer uh, developers can uh, utilize our horizontal screen, where we actually call it the touch map, where Ruben has shown you the picture of a Sprout in his uh, introduction. Um, we also have virtual keyboard where um, developer can enable and disable uh, programmatically. Um, the uh, ac ac access to the, the camera and the sensor of the illuminator 
is also available through the JavaScript framework. <clears throat> so with that, you can uh, easily capture uh, objects on the touch mat and get the result back as images or segmented images uh, for each object itself. Um, the other feature that support all this uh, capturing and map displays are uh, you can get the outline and the contour of each of the objects uh, from the images. Uh, we have an OCR capability uh, where when you scan a piece of text, you can actually retrieve the text into your program and and, and manipulate uh, from there. Uh, last but not least, and, and this is a very interesting use case, is object tracking. Um, we enable object tracking uh, through our sensors uh, where when you put uh, some uh, 2D, uh, 2D pictures and objects on, on the mat, uh, the Sprout can actually uh, recognize them and track them uh, as they move along on the touch mat itself. So I will try to uh, demonstrate as, as, as many as possible if the time is uh, allow me to do so. But um, since we have also the emulator demo, um, uh, we need to kind of move pretty fast. So from this point, um, I'm going to jump directly into uh, some coding exercise to show you how easy it is to do a live um, JavaScript programming. So let me get out of this. No. <coughs> Excuse me again. <clears throat> so what I'm showing you on the screen right now is our framework. So when you go to our website and download the framework and then zip the package, you will see such a uh, file structure in the folder. Um, this is a very uh, a typical uh, Node WebKit or NWJS structure where it has a nw.exe, which is the executable runtime that will run the uh, HTML and JavaScript code. And you have some of the HTML file here and possibly some other JavaScript if your program is uh, very complicated. Um, so before I start coding, one thing to call to attention is this a uh, file called um, <clears throat> package.json file. Let me so this package.json file is very similar to other application uh, system we call it the manifest file. It kind of indicates uh, what your uh, application name is and version number. Um, the the main line here is the interesting part. It is kind of the entry point of the application. If you're familiar with JavaScript uh, and HTML, you always start with some kind of an HTML file, uh, and then you from there you include your JavaScript, you link to other external sources and things like that. So in this case, um, the name of the uh, of the main file so is index.html. And you can really uh, use any file name you like. You can call it apps.html or main.html if you like. <clears throat> and then the next section is about uh, what the Windows uh, uh, property is, like the, the width, the size, <clears throat> or is it a, rather a, a full screen uh, or, or not full screen application. So these are pretty uh, um, um, self-explanatory. Um, the part that is uh, interesting is that I'm going to show you is this toolbar um, uh, attribute. So this actually related to the Chromium toolbar. And if we enable uh, this toolbar attribute, it will allow us to uh, debug our code uh, uh, with the JavaScript console. Uh, and I will show you in a bit when we actually get to um, um, debug the code or, or run the code. <clears throat> so now that I make that change, I'm go back to my main HTML file and start the fun part. Um, so here I have the <clears throat> HTML file template. Um, it's a very typical HTML uh, uh, template, although you can see the syntax is actually, we're kind of simplifying it. It's not really 
you know, with the HTML5 tag there, but it works. Um, so we have this script portion in inside the, the head section, which is typically where you type your code, and also find the from HTML body where you would define your UI uh, presentation. So I'm going to start typing code now. Um, so in order to use the uh, framework and access to uh, our Sprout uh, capability, it's very simple. Uh, all we need to do is take advantage of the Node.js uh, convention uh, to utilize a module that uh, our Sprout team has created named Sprout. Now this line is all you need to actually instantiate a, a Sprout object and from there you can actually uh, <coughs> access all the API that is available through this object. So just one line of code. Um, the next thing that I would add to the code is to utilize the, uh, the matte horizontal screen. Now the matte horizontal screen is another unique feature of Sprout. So what I'm doing here, I'm just simply adding a function called show mat. And do that. Uh, in order to use the uh, to open up the mat, um, again, like I mentioned before, I will start using the Sprout object that I acquired uh, through the previous line. It's actually a global variable, so I can just do uh, sprout dot and the method is open mat with the parameter of mat dot html for now and I'll show you so this mat dot html is another html file that is inside the package and it's also a very simple um, html file we have <coughs> So basically what we are doing there is that open a mat and load this HTML file uh, uh, called mat.html. Now here in this case you can actually load any live website onto the mat itself or you can reload any live uh, website onto the horizontal screen as well. Or you can do that by just uh, basically changing the windows location of each, uh, of each of the uh, Windows handle. So now this function is done. One line of code will display the mat.html on the horizontal screen. In order for that to work, I actually do need a button at the bottom, and we're going to just go to call it. We have that on click function. and then just reference to our function we just created here. Keep it a label. And close the tag. <clears throat> now, with this uh, three, four, three lines of code, now we can load the mat itself. Um, and the next thing that I will add is actually the uh, the capture capability of of Sprout itself. Now, uh, with the sensor on the uh, on the Sprout, we can actually capture physical objects and segment them into different images. So, uh, and the code is for also very simple. Uh, what we're doing here is very similar. We create a function called capture. Uh, let's do a lowercase to keep consistent. Okay. And what we're going to use uh, as in actually de describing our documentation is a JavaScript syntax called a promise. Uh, basically the promise syntax, if you're not familiar with it, is that um, for asynchronous operation on the JavaScript, we can have very simple uh, way of writing them so that when one asynchronous function is finished, uh, the next function will execute immediately after that when the function get returned. So what we will do is do some typing now. It, it could be um, uh, that, you know, a little 
uh, looks a little complex, but it's actually very easy to understand. So we start with sprout.capture, which is the main capture function offered by the SDK. Uh, the next um, operation we enter is actually called then. Basically, this is the um, the syntax for promise. When the sprout capture actually return, the syntax will take us to the next function without um, blocking the, uh, the, the the thread itself. So now I have this function here. easier if I now move up. So inside the function, what we do is just call a return sprout picture. This is another function that is uh, documented in the API. So when we pass in the uh, ID to that function, now we're using this ID, we can actually get the um, the, the picture that we capture from, from the mat itself. That's it. Now that's the first part to capture and then we using the ID that is returned and get the picture. The next thing we're going to do is actually putting the image, image itself on the mat and that's kind of just uh, uh, already normal JavaScript uh, you know programming to get that to work. So the Sprout specific part is already done. Um, what next we're doing is actually just um, common JavaScript programming where we're displaying the um, images onto the onto the screen itself. Um, so what we here will do is um, we will find a document uh, element. Call result, which we'll create in a moment, and the image tag is or the image element itself needs to set a source, and we're going to use inline data in this case because we have the image uh, data coming back in the um, function itself. And then now you notice the function actually got passed in with an object. This object is a tree of uh, pictures, or or we call it uh, a moment in the um, Sprout app development concept, where it has all the images where we segmented from the map itself uh, when we capture the uh, all the objects from the map. So, image, and that will return me the right image. So I set the image source. The next thing is very simple. I would then set the um, width of the image. Um, 1024, let's say, and next is the height. 2720, let's say. Now that's all good. Um, if everything goes well, you know, no error, and you get everything you need. But um, things not always happen the way we want it. So we added a little bit of uh, error handling in this case, where when the function actually fail, we at least know that it fell. So what we're going to do is we're going to add. Uh, Um, capture fail here and now I need to make sure this stuff are in the right closure so let's see if I miss anything ah. and of course
there it was, typo. Okay, so and as I mentioned, of course, we do need um, another button to trigger this function. Just like we had before, and it's called capture. And then we'll give it a label called capture. Okay. Now uh, we also need a picture element where we can actually, you know, update the picture to or an image element so we can update the um, result from our capture moment. Okay, oops, let's do that. And then set the source to also no. Okay, so so as I'm typing it, um, you're probably thinking, okay, this guy's gonna make a lot of mistake and this is not gonna run and I think the same way as well. Um, <laughs> but uh, I have uh, some some helper that next to me and catch my typo. So let's let's run this. Give it a give it a go. Um, of course, like any of the you know uh, cooking show, I have you know uh, complete code that works, and if I need to replace them, I will replace them. So um, so that's the code. Let's close that up. And uh, this is the time we switch to the camera behind me. So you look a little bit strange, uh, but we will be there. Uh, let's see. Okay, the camera is getting the screen. And we should have it momentarily. Okay, so I hope you are seeing the uh, the spiral itself, and and it's, it's still the same machine <laughs> that I was just doing coding. So let's let's run the code that we have just added. Um, so we close the index of XML now to execute the, the the sample that we just did. We, what we need to do is just run nw.exe. Um, remember. Uh, ages ago when I talked to you about the package.json file, I have the toolbar set to enable and this is where you get the toolbar. And in order to debug, you just click on it and find your source and there you go. You can actually use this uh, console to expect, uh, inspect your elements and debug your JavaScript code here. So uh, in order, okay, so let me just quickly set one big point and it won't last, okay, but well that already passed. So um, so to show the screen, I click on this button, I hit my break point just to show you that it breaks here, map.xml and I continue to run. Or I continue to run here. So. Now you can see on the bottom or the horizontal screen, that's where we have this uh, hello from Sproul Matt screen there. Apologize for the rainbow effect that you're seeing because the projector is actually, I believe, running at 60 hertz and then um, uh, 60 megahertz, and, and this camera is probably uh, not uh, catching it everything. But the next thing that I want to show you is the capture capability that we have just coded. So let's put two objects on the, the map. If I type everything correctly in that long uh, promise statement, it will start the capture. And momentarily, the picture should come back. It doesn't, so let me do a quick. Oh, <laughs> okay, it came. <laughs> so the code actually was correct. So uh, I didn't. 
well, uh, again, like I said, uh, there's helper behind me to point out all the typos that I made, but it worked. So, so going back, uh, I think looking at the code itself, it was only about like uh, five minutes of, of of coding, and I could display the map and also run uh, the capture feature uh, with pretty simple coding, and then stick it into HTML5. I mean, all this is <laughs> very exciting because you got the HTML5 that uh, features that behind you with all the vector graphics and um, offline, online capability and video capability were you know, already built into Chromium. Um, plus, with the uh, Node.js uh, module, you can access the file system uh, if you're familiar with Node.js um, or access to uh, a, 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 a big range of database system like SQLite, MySQL. It's all already built in with third-party Node uh, modules, and that's the power of uh, you know, web technology where you know it's open and, and there's a lot of contribution. Now that was the uh, code that I've written in in a few minutes. What I want to show also is um, some already built um, sample code that we have. Uh, in particular, um, I want to show you the object checking that we mentioned before. Um, so the sample codes available on our website and there are instructions on how to run them. Now what you're seeing is something called the object tracking um, sample. So what I did, is, what, I, what I'm going to do is well, first I'll hit the initialize object tracking and I will place a postcard on the map and I'll train the system to understand or recognize this postcard. And then the training is done. Now, in fact, I can train another object. This is a, a USB um, package that, that we have. I'll train it again with just one button. And take a picture, and our system is trying to be recognizing that feature. So it also say uh, object capture successful. So, um, so at this point, what I would like to do is actually um, see if I can maximize this to you for you. Yes, I could. Okay. So this is the sample code, and uh, let me scroll down a little bit. And when I say start tracking, you can see some of the data is actually updating itself. Now, basically, what we're seeing is the x coordinate and the y coordinate and the package itself. And it, the name is object 2 because this is the second object that we capture. So if I move it on the screen, the coordinates are actually updating at real time. And actually it's fluctuating a bit because uh, it, it, it capturing the object itself at real time. So, But it does recognize the same object and I want to move it around. Now if I take it out, the um, data is actually stopped updating itself. Now, remember I put the postcard in there? Now, when I put back the postcard, I'm not sure if you see the text itself, but it actually say object one is back onto the map, and now I can move it around, and it's updating its uh, coordinates again. Um, and that's kind of an object tracking for you. Um, for each sample code that you download from our website, you can actually view the code. Um, that's very simple. And I'll let you, um, you know, download our code and explore how these uh, object tracking and training works. But uh, like I said, all the code that are available on our website had sample code in there, and you can view the code as you need it. Um, I actually have a couple other. Um, samples to show you. Maybe I'll do one more before we switch to the emulator. The other one is actually the OCR capability uh, JavaScript application. Similarly, I run the, the application. I piece a piece of paper on the um, on the mat itself uh, with some description. So if I click on scan text, in this case, I'll do another capture. And our computer vision library 
behind the scene and the OCR engine is actually reading uh, the code now, I mean, reading the text, and able to extract the text. And this is an Wikipedia article from for uh, Big Bird and Sesame Street. So again, the code is available. It's only, no, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. It's only 10 lines of code, and you can uh, capture the, uh, the article itself and also extract the text. So, so 10 lines plus or minus. Um, so that's the um, JavaScript portion that I want to show you as a live demo. And now I'm switching back to my own desktop. And we are about to go to emulator. But before that, let me remind you that the JavaScript is uh, available now in sprout.xp.com slash developer. And all the examples that I've shown you are also available to download. We have uh, the framework itself and API uh, reference and package, packaging documentation as well. So, so feel free to explore our um, JavaScript framework. Uh, the next thing that uh, we will do a, a demo pretty quickly as well is the Sprout emulator. Uh, we recognize uh, that getting a Sprout hardware is, it sometimes uh, may not be uh, available for everybody, but you can still develop with the uh, simulation mode on our platform. Uh, what we have added to the, um, the development tool set is the Sprout emulator. With the emulator, you practically can uh, have the Sprout experience on a non-Sprout hardware configuration, like this picture that I'm showing you. Uh, you can use a regular uh, laptop and a external monitor to simulate the two-screen experience uh, of our Sprout. And with the emulator, you can actually try it out the uh, the workspace experience yourself. We'll show you shortly. Um, and we recognize the uh, the Sprout itself has a few hardware keys, where uh, have some very interesting uh, interaction that uh, uh, when the consumer is actually using the Sprout. And so we actually emulate those keys in this configuration as well. So we will show you how it works. Basically, uh, w w like a key combination where you ha you hit out one, out two, and out three it will kind of simulate the hardware key uh, experience for you. So now um, I'll, I'll stop sharing my presentation. We'll go to a live camera to show you the emulator experience. So let me switch that to see here, and so we can share the camera. Okay, um, so here we're looking at a, a, a non-Sprout configuration, but we can run the emulator with. Um, so like I uh, explained before, this is an external monitor with a um, um, regular laptop. The external monitor is going to act as a, uh, the, our, our HD uh, screen for Sprout, which is the 1920 by uh, 10, 1080. Uh, and then the laptop screen is going to be uh, uh, emulating the touch mat itself. So now um, the emulator, after you download the package and install, is going to be an icon on your desktop. It's called the Sprout emulator. And let's launch that from the desktop. By the way, I have uh, uh, Sohib helping me running the emulator while I'm talking. Uh, so when you started the Sprout, you have this uh, start screen just like the uh, uh, Sprout hardware itself, um, where you can tap in the center to start the session. With the Sprout uh, session, uh, what you will see is the um, uh, a gallery part on the vertical side and a landing page on the horizontal. Uh, screen, or in this case, which is the uh, laptop screen itself. Um, you know, this, uh, the experience is very similar to actual Sprout. 
Um, we have three panels on the vertical screen. Uh, we have the projects, the images, and the applications. And notice the application right now is empty because we're going to install an application later on. But right now it's empty. Um, we'll, we'll show you how the third-party application interaction is going to work. Now, um, with this, with this uh, emulator, one of the one of the purposes is actually give uh, developer a sense of what Sprout is and 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 how the um, workspace is helping consumer to create stuff. So the create application in this uh, emulator actually uh, it works. So it's very similar to uh, uh, actual Sprout. When the create tip space is um, is available, you can use that to draw. Um, or you can, uh, you know, uh, drag some pictures and, and, and put it in and create your own postcard or poster. Um, but the other thing that we can directly access from here is the capture capability. We also simulate, uh, the platform also simulates this capability. So let's do a, um, a capture from our, uh, from, from the emulator mode. Um, so with the camera button, we can just click on it and it will start to emulate the capture. So this is what we call the uh, you know, uh, simulation data that because we don't have the eliminator uh, to capture all, uh, the, the sensor on the top. So, so we provide so, uh, some predefined data, we call it the mock data, where you know, we'll simulate the object creation and, and segmentation. So, so what we just did is we do a capture of the map and we simulate the you know um, uh, object segmentation with the individual object. So if we accept these uh, pictures, they will be part of the creative space, and they will be also saved in the gallery images uh, panel. So this is again, uh, if giving a developer a sense of how um, workspace actually function with the emulator itself. So that's very powerful. Um, the other thing that we would like to sh show you uh, or mention is the hardware keys. So, for example, if I want to bring up a virtual keyboard, um, so it will press Alt 1. Okay. I think you have to hold it a little bit longer. There you go. Uh, it's on the vertical screen, I mean, the, on the horizontal screen right now. Um, so that is actually a, a programmable virtual keyboard where third-party uh, applications have access to through the SDK. So let's close the uh, virtual keyboard. All right. All right. The other key that we want to show you is the what the home key of the uh, Sprout. Whenever you hit the home key, uh, it will toggle back to, so let's close the uh, gallery first, the vertical screen. So w let's say you're in the desktop mode and you have been writing documents with Word or presentation and you want to get back to the Sprout uh, or the workspace. Uh, on a hardware, typically what you do is you hit the home key where the, which is on the buckle. But in this case, we simulate the, 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 the key uh, with all two we would be able to bring back the um, the gallery and the landing page itself. And that's a very uh, helpful interaction when third-party developers want to create an application and make sure the interaction of going back to the workspace is working. So we provided the uh, hardware key this way as well. The last thing we're going to show you is to uh, actually installing an application into the emulator. Uh, so let's close the uh, gallery vertical. So we already made um, a installer in this case. Uh, when we install this application, just like any uh, Windows application, it has an installer. And we're going to go through the installer itself. Go ahead. And it's pretty fast. And this actually application is done with JavaScript itself, just like the previous example. Um, we're waiting for it to install. It's done. So what happened is when we install a Sprout application, uh, what we do is um, 
we place it in the application panel. So if we bring up the gallery again, you see this little Pac-Man figure right now is under the applications uh, panel. So the other interaction with the Sprout is actually you can you can drop this application onto the landing page uh, as a launcher. So you can drop or a consumer can drop their favorite application onto the map. When we did that, you can you notice on the uh, laptop screen or the horizontal screen has an application now. So uh, and the typical interaction is that you tap on it and it will bring up an application uh, onto the Sprout screen. So this is an image capture example from our code. And if you hit the capture button, the same mock data that we mentioned before will show up in this application. So uh, all these mock data and simulation data is behind the scene of the SDK. So the actual call to the SDK is the same. So the developer doesn't have to change anything. Uh, when they get it working on the emulator, um, they could just you know package it up and run it on a Sprout and they will do the actual capturing. Uh, with that, um, I have spoken a lot already, and so uh, and we have done our emulator demo as well. Um, so I will switch the uh, 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 presentation back to Ruben. <coughs> Yes. Ruben, do you have yeah. the screen? Yes. All right. Uh, you should be able to see my screen now. Okay. So just to uh, conclude the web the webinar, um, and before we go to a uh, uh, Q and A, uh, we wanna share with you some locations where we have some testing Sprout machines. You can just you can just go there and play with them and 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 use them. We have some machines in the Hacker Dojo at uh, Mountain View. We have two units there. And we also have some machines at the tech shop in San Francisco. So you can feel free to use those machines on those locations. And if you think about some other location where you will be interested in us to have testing machines, please just let us know using the chat uh, window. And we will we will be uh, analyzing this information. And uh, just to conclude, well, uh, we have a repository of information. It's our developer website, sprout.hp.com slash developer. You can find their resources, DSDK, documentation, sample apps, and some additional resources like a forum, developer forum guidelines, and downloadable UX assets. And with that, I will uh, leave it for some Q&A. And uh, let me see if there is some questions here. Okay, I think there was first a question about Node.js. Um, the question was, wait just a second. Very, it's very small. That uh, if we can use the Node.js syntax. So uh, maybe Seto or Seto, you can answer that question, right? Uh, yeah, I'm not 100% sure what the question is. If you mean um, the syntax in terms of um, getting the modules, um, yes. Uh, it just like it, it just like I show you, you do a module require, you know, so a module and you, you, you have the API. Now, um, again, Node.js is JavaScript. So all the other syntax, you just follow the JavaScript, and, and that's pretty much it. Uh, for the modulo itself, there are tons of other ways of creating those modulos. Uh, one of the things that um, our team has looked into is called the Edge.js, where um, the Edge.js actually allow you to uh, tap into uh, some C Sharp library and C++ library itself. I believe it's also work on Objective-C library, but that's kind of out of scope. So, uh, I, I hope I answered the question. Please ask us again if, if I'm, I'm not uh, uh, addressing it correctly. Okay. And the other question is that is the marketplace for building, sharing, and selling Sparrow applications, is there a community growing for this? Uh, yes. So we have a Sprout marketplace, and any any Sprout device has access to this marketplace. 
in we are actually encouraging the developers to create an applications and uh, submitting those to the marketplace using the tools that we are that we are showing. So there is definitely a marketplace for for those applications. I don't know if uh, Seth, is there anything that you want to add on on top of that or? No, I think you're right. Um, okay. We'll, we'll, for anyone who is interested in, in, in uh, publishing an app, you know, feel free to contact us. We have um, we have our email here. If you have any other questions, feel free to send us. We'll help you. Okay. There is another question. Uh, I'm not able to see this very well. It's very small. Uh, okay. Well, if you. Yeah, Ruben, you can actually click on the little arrow button and we'll expand the question box oh. itself. It's easier to see that way. Okay, got it. Mm -hmm. Okay, give me just a second. Here it is. 3D Jet in the SDK. Okay, so uh, we, we still don't have an API for being able to take advantage of the uh, 3D scanning yet, but that is something that we, we are working on. So I will say that wait for some news later on, on that. Um, there is another question for us to judge. Have a laptop or what I have in some Windows 10 and it's a touch screen laptop. Can I use that as a touch mat screen and my external monitor as a sprout screen? So do you want to answer that? Sure. Um, that's a great question. Um, I We have done uh, uh, some testing with the workspace and um, on our software on Win10. It's not officially supported, but we haven't seen um, uh, too many issues with it, so it should run pretty okay. If you encounter any uh, any problem, feel free to send us a, uh, uh, an email. We will we'll get in touch with you and, and and see how we can fix it. But uh, uh, we haven't encountered any 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 major issues. Uh, but I would say still uh, we haven't officially supporting Windows 10 because it's not uh, official uh, uh, releases yet, and 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 so that that's the kind of the official answer right now. We we'll, we'll try to help you if uh, if you if you want to run on it and have some issues. Okay, there is another question. It says, can we project an image over capture object on the map after capture image first and change the color of scan object, for example? Um, I think I, I can answer that question. When you when you get the image, you uh, it you you can get as many images as the objects you have on top of the map. And then you can do with them whatever you want because you basically have the, the image itself. Now, if you're projecting it on top of the real object, there is a couple things to consider. If the image, if the, if the element, the object that you have on top of the map is very flat and is not too uh, high, normally the projection is kind of one to one. It, it, it's kind of sometimes hard to recognize which one is the image, which one is the real one. If the object is, is much higher, imagine for instance an orange, then the because it's projected, it's gonna look a little bit uh, different because there is some shadow on on it as well that it gets projected. But uh, in terms of changing the color, well, it depends of if you wanna change the color of the real object. If you have a white object, for instance, and you're projecting, a, you modify the image to another color and project on top of the object, you kind of get that feeling. That is a um, pretty cool thing about the uh, I mean, the reality. Like if you have a piece of paper and you have an object on the piece of paper and you scan it and then you can modify the uh, the image color and then project on top of the same paper, you will you will notice that. That's kind of a mental reality in, in that in that sense. I hope that uh, I was answering the question properly. Let me know if it, if I wasn't. <laughs> Okay, there is a continuation from last question. Can I use the laptop screen to emulator the to emulate the touch mat and external monitor and sprout screen? Okay, so it's can I use the laptop screen to emulate the touch mat and external monitor as a sprout screen? So you pretty much can choose either of them. So in the in the in the demonstration that Seto provided, he used it. He used the monitor as the 
as the as the monitor of the sprout and the laptop as the touch mat, but you can actually configure. It's just a matter of going to the to the settings and selecting which is the uh, main uh, screen. Uh, one one addition to what Ruben just said. Yes. Um, also, um, it's not required, but if w either of your screen, either the laptop or the or the external monitors, is touch enable, that will help a lot as well. It's not required, like I said, uh, with with the non-touch uh, um, laptop or or external monitor, it will still work. You just require mouse click. But there is something. Uh, a lot easier if, if one of the monitors touch enable. You can actually uh, utilize the touch events from the operating system itself to be closer to uh, what the Sprout can actually offer. So that's uh, just one addition to, 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 the, to the question or to the answer. OK, there is another question uh, about the hacker you and tech shop. If you need to be a member to use the machines, uh, you have Cynthia right there with you. Maybe she can answer that. You know, can you? Can she comment on that? Okay. Um, so here, yeah, they don't have a microphone <laughs> on them. Yeah. So the answer that I got from the, them is that yes, you do need a membership uh, of the uh, to in order to use the Sprout in Hacker Dojo and in the, uh, the tech shop. I also have an, an amendment well, to that uh, as well. well I, did assume, no, I just got the information, sorry. Uh, they also have daily membership, so you can go in and, and, and try to get it um, that okay. day if you want. Okay, another question. How to convert WPF app to Node.js? Do you want to comment on that, Seto or uh, Sip? Um, well, uh, I, I, I can first comment, but uh, if she wants to add, you feel free to after. I mean, um, <clears throat> I, so it, it's hard to say there is a need to do that. Like if, if your application is running well, um, we support both. Uh, we actually originally support more uh, functions and features in, 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 in C Sharp WPF. Um, so I, I, we don't really see the need if it's running well. Um, but the C# -sharp syntax is actually very similar to JavaScript, if you look at it. I mean, uh, there, there has to be certainly some work has to be done in terms of um, some of the specialized classes and, and, and utility that offer from WPF. Um, but it's, it, I mean, it's, you know, in terms of writing this, the C# -sharp languages in JavaScript, is very it, they're very close, but not not entirely, you know, uh, the same. Um, so if you want to add anything, no, no, I can. It's okay. He, he keep. <laughs> um, but yeah, it depends on your need. Like again, we we are available to discuss with you as well. If if that's something you really really want to do, um, we don't we don't see any. Um, uh, how do I say it? Uh, a huge difference between the two. Uh, but if you want to do it, we we're happy to discuss with you and, and why you want to do that. Okay, the, I think this is just a continuation. If we can share the same library, so I think I'm going to skip it because it goes to the same uh, comment. Uh, question, when will there be support for Sprout in Australia as the hardware is not currently available here? Okay, so um, the I believe that the SDK can be downloaded from any place, right, uh, Seto? Yeah. Yeah. So the SDK can be downloaded. The uh, right now the hardware we are not selling it there. I I don't think we have uh, or we have a date that we have uh, announced yet in terms of that. But uh, at the moment that it is, maybe we can come back to you uh, as well there. I don't know if anyone in the room has any comment about that. Yeah, uh, we we don't. We don't, we don't, we don't, we don't really uh, share any non-public information <laughs> all over the webinar. But we, I, we can assure you that we're working really, really hard to get Sprout to, to, to all the you know major markets, and Australia definitely is one of the major markets, uh, obviously. So uh, keep an eye on our on our on our Sprout uh, dot .com website. As soon as we 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 know, we can announce, we talk about it, then it will be on our website and on our newsletters. Okay. Yeah. 
and 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 obviously, uh, you know, come come to our program and register, and we could we could we will also send you know up to, up to date information as well to our website. Another question is, uh, what kind of? Well, we are actually six minutes uh, past the hour, but maybe we'll continue and if if there is no problem for for the attendees. So what kind of applications are you looking for from developers? How big is the current marketplace? Is there any registration for being an official developer like iOS and Android? So um, I'll answer part of this question and maybe Seto can uh, comment more. Uh, we are looking for applications that take advantage of the Sprout of the Sprout capabilities. That's kind of the the main elements. It could be of any kind of applications, uh, as long as they are uh, according to some content guidelines in terms of the content itself. But uh, but that take advantage of the elements that like the camera, the dual screen. That's the kind of applications that we are looking for. We do have a marketplace. Uh, we are growing our community. We're growing the number of applications that we have. And we are very happy to uh, to work, or uh, if you have any questions, to support you guys on, on on any difficulty that you may have in, or any big idea that you have. Uh, we currently we don't charge anything for registration. You just can find the you can find the information in the slash developer And uh, I think that that's where you will find. All what you need. Uh, Seth, do you have any comment? Uh, so you don't you don't necessarily need to register to get our SDK and the tools and the framework. But if uh, when you decided to publish in, in our marketplace, um, you do need to register. Um, although I mean, we strongly encourage you to register because that's how we know people are interested in our platform, and we we cannot get you updated and. Uh, it's really encouraging to have people register. So <laughs> um, register anyway. Uh, on the publishing side, uh, we do require you register a publisher account and accept the terms and condition as a publisher because that's just normal. And I think that the last comment, I think, is kind of on the same one, is to bring the Sprout into university. So uh, thanks for your feedback. I think that that's something that will be exploring and will be analyzing in, in the team. All right, I think those are all the questions that we have. I think uh, on behalf of the Sprout team, we appreciate a lot uh, you were taking this time and actually going a little bit uh, further away. Ruben, I want to add yes. one thing that I uh, forgot to mention and, 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 and then behind me actually reminded me. It's the okay. publisher account is also free. Uh, so actually, virtually, there's no charges at all with developing so Sprout right now. So I just want to make sure people uh, get that message across. Okay. Yep. All right. Thank you, Seto. Then uh, I think that if there are no more questions, uh, we just uh, hope you have a wonderful rest of the day, and uh, we'll see you in our next in our next events or webinars around. Thank you very much.